Hey Nathan here, welcome to the last video of the DirectX basic training series. And this episode is going to talk about drawing text. The last episode I discussed how to tie in the keyboard state, the keyboard system, get async key state, how to tie that into your game object so we can move our game object based on our keyboard input. This video, I'm just going to discuss how to draw text to the screen. Now there are two ways we can do this. We can use a standard font on the system and use a built-in DirectX call for that. Or we can create our own font system and use our own font bitmap that we create and then draw our text that way. For this tutorial, I'm going to discuss how to draw text by using the standard font. Uh, we are going to use Arial for that, and we're just going to use a function built into DirectX to use a system font and draw that on the screen. I am using the game object class sample as a base that will be provided in the description or on my site. So download that, that will be the base for this video if we press F5. This is what we talked about in the game object class tutorial. So I'm just going to rename the window to draw text and draw text sample. Okay, so this is a pretty quick tutorial. I won't focus a lot on the details. Uh, that will be later in the advanced training series when we create our own font engine. And we will talk about how to use a bitmap font and create our own font engine to deal with that. But there's really no advanced stuff to worry about when you use the built-in draw text functionality in DirectX. So I'm going to go to the game.h header file here. And I'm going to add some things to the header file. So to, in order to draw something to the screen, we need to have a font object, a rectangle that lets us know where to draw it on the screen, and the amount of space to allocate for the width and height of the font, and then a message that we want to draw. And that's going to be a string. It needs to... We'll use the... Uh, dot c string like we've used in the past but it's a lot easier to deal with it on a string basis so the first thing is the font object so that is part of the directx it's the d3dx font so i'm going to do i d3dx font here and i'm just going to call it font Now a rectangle, that's just going to be a standard rect here, and I'm just going to call it F rectangle. The last thing is that message that I mentioned, so that's going to be std string message. Alright, so the font will do the rendering. We have the rectangle to tell us where to start drawing the text and how much to allocate for the width and the height. And our message is what we are going to draw. So now if we open up our game.cpp here, we need to create the font and we're going to do that in the initialize function here. And after we initialize player 2, let's do something here. So we're going to do d3dx create font here and we're just going to do the create font function we're doing this in the game class so we can have access to our graphics device easily g device and then arrow and then just access the device now we need to provide the height of our characters so this is where you can provide the how big you want the characters to be I'm going to choose about 40 here. Uh, 
we're going to do zero for the width. And we'll manipulate this later so we can see what differences it makes. Now it wants us to control the weight. And that's, you know, we can bold it. So I'm just going to do the normal weight here. Font weight underscore bold or normal. I'm not going to bold it. MIP levels, just set that to 1. We are not going to italicize it. The character set. Here you can specify what the character set will be. If you just want to do like hello world or just standard text, you can just do the default character set. Output precision. Here we just provide out underscore default underscore P R E C I S. So the, we're just using the default precision here. Next thing is the quality. We are going to anti alias the text, so we need to do anti alias quality. Pitch and family. We don't care about the pitch, and the family will just be the default. So provide the FF underscore don't care. Uh, you can do decorative and other stuff. Uh, you can look at the documentation on what kind of values you can provide here. But this will just give you a basic text to draw. We don't care about the pitch and the family, uh, so you just provide FF don't care. Now this part is where you say the face name. Like I mentioned, we are going to use Arial. Just provide the name of the system font in here. So we're just going to do the ampersand font here. All right, so let's add something before the d3dx create font function here. Let's set font is equal to null. Let's just set that to null. Let's make sure that's null. Now, all just like the game sprite here, the d3dx create texture from file, the most of the create stuff we're using generates an h result. So let's capture the h result of the d3dx create font here. So font is equal to null, and then we get the h result of the d3dx create font. So now, just like on the other ones, we need to have an if here. So if not, if not succeeded hr, we will return false. So just like how we do here, if not succeeded, we return false. You can do a message box if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to return false here. So if the we set the font is equal to null, and then we get the h result of the d3dx create font. If that went through fine, you know, it will have obviously succeeded, so it will go and follow through the next, it will return true. Okay, so if that succeeded to create the font, let's go ahead and start creating the rectangle and the message to display. So we use the set rect function here. Now when you pass in the uh, ampersand f rectangle, now we need to pass in the x, y width and height. The x and y here are where the top left of the rectangle will be. So that's 0, 0. The x right and x, y bottom, that's the width and the height that you want the rectangle to be. I'm going to do some static value 100, 200. So what that means is we have our game window here. Our rectangle will start at 0, 0, which is here. And it will go 100, 200, which is, you know, right here. So our rectangle will be this. That means our text only has this area to display. This is the only space that can occupy 
that we can print our text. All right, so now let's just set the message is equal to this is some generic message to display on the screen. So just some message you want to, oops. Just some message you want to display on the screen here. All right, so that's it for the initialize function. Now let's go to the draw function here. So if our font has been initialized successfully and it is ready to use, let's set font arrow draw text. And we're going to use draw text A. Now the first thing it wants is a sprite. And let's just go ahead and pass null here. We're not using a sprite. Our string, so we have our message string here, and we do dot C underscore string. The count, the number of characters to display or negative one to display the whole thing. And uh, that only works for null terminated string. If you're not using a null terminated string, you'll have to provide the character count here. So next up, we need to provide the rectangle. So ampersand F rectangle here. Just provide the rectangle there. Uh, next up is the format. And then we can provide all sorts of text formatting, you know, left align, aligned or top aligned. So I'm going to make sure it's DT underscore left aligned here. And the color. Uh, just like we have device clear here, we're going to use the XRGB as well and we're going to use a black color so black is zero on all the channels zero red zero green and zero blue so for the color we're using d3 d color underscore x rgb open parentheses zero comma zero comma zero closing parentheses so that will draw the font now in the D structure here, let's release our font. If font, let's release our font. Font arrow release. And then font is equal to zero. So we are releasing the DirectX resource and setting it to zero. All right, now if we press F5, let's see if it'll compile, and let's see if it'll draw the string. All right, as you see here, we only have this is. It's drawing text, but we only have this is. That is because we provided a very small rectangle here. It should say this is some generic message to display on the screen. Now, in this D3D X create font here you see we set the 40 for the height and 0 for the width you know if we set 40 for the width as well you'll see the width is stretching the text it's being stretched horizontally so we want to keep that at 0 the text looked fine at 0 let's change this to about 22 so it's smaller font, it's smaller height, so we get more of the text. But as you see, it cuts out a letter. So we can change our rectangle here. Let's set that to about 500, comma, 300 here. This is some generic message to display on the screen. So 500 width rectangle gives us our entire message. So that's something you need to keep aware of when you're drawing text by using this and you're using a rectangle. Uh, we're going to get into a more advanced concepts in the advanced technique series where we will discuss how to appropriately use a rectangle for this. Uh, you remember in the draw text A where we provided negative 1 for the number of characters to draw? Let's set that to 3 instead of negative 1. 
and let's see what happens. THI, that's all it displays. So if you want to display the entire string and it is a null terminating string, provide negative one here and it will draw the entire string. So keep in mind, if part of your text is being cut out, check your rectangle. Uh, you can tie this into the game window here and set up a width and height by the uh, game window size if you want to. But the more space you give the rectangle, the larger the the more text will be displayed on the on the screen. So what if we have a slash n here? What happens? So we have this is some generic message to and then on a new line display on the screen. So that is what is known as an escape character. And slash n is for new line. So if you want stuff on new lines, use the slash n here. All right, that's it for this video. Just a basic overview on how to draw text to the screen. We are using a rectangle, and if we have a small enough rectangle, it will cut off some of the text. Uh, let's set this to about 50. Oh, let's set this to about 25. All right, let's set this to about 35. I want to demonstrate it being cut off. So our rectangle cuts off the text at a certain amount. The height is easy to identify. We have a 22 height here, and our rectangle is 35 here. So we have two lines of text here. At 22, two lines will be 44. So if we set this to 44, we get both of the lines and they're fully visible. They're not being cut off. The width is a lot more difficult to deal with. Again, we're going to do a more advanced topics and we'll discuss more in depth on how to draw text by using a font engine instead of dealing with the rectangle. All right, so that's it for this video and that's it for the basic training series. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned where we will split off and do a pawn clone. We will discuss a paddles tutorial where we are going to delete everything and start creating the game from scratch. We're going to move a lot of stuff around and kind of organize stuff better since we're not dealing with dedicated tutorials. And then we will do an advanced techniques series where we will discuss more complex topics like uh, a font engine, a screen system, and stuff like that. I input system and that kind of thing. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.